Hey everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Phil Ebener and I'm here with Diego Davila. Today we're talking all about online business and a digital products based business. Uh, you might be watching this if you're in our digital products masterclass or if not, you might be watching this on YouTube or Facebook and we're just here to talk about our experience running an online business and give you some insights and tips, best practices. The point is for you to actually learn something if you're trying to start your own online business and also just to get to know us and our story a little bit better. So Diego, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Every Everything good. How are you, Phil? <laughs> good, good. Very good. 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 Very excited Thank you for about, being here, guys. Yeah, very excited about this topic. And uh, I think... Just to dive right into online business, it's a great time and we've really benefited from having online businesses ourselves. Yes. But I think right now in particular is a moment where starting an online business or if you have a, an existing business, um, maybe it's an in-person sort of standard business or service, converting that to online is like a really good thing. So. Kick us off and what do you think, why, why is having an online business important right now? Well, now is, I think it's one of the best times to, as Phil said, to turn what you have on your offline business online or to start something from scratch, right? To start an online uh, business where you can create products, uh, reach people all over the world. And this time field that we just passed with the, uh, we're still passing through, right? With the pandemic and all that. So people are staying at home and buying more online. Companies are waking up to the, the all the power of the online tools that we have. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, the biggest reason of why we should, you should start, I think, thinking about turning your business online or starting something from scratch. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm sure we'll put this video out there and people might be watching this in a year, two years, three years, hopefully after this pandemic has all kind of been figured out. Everyone's been vaccinated or enough people yeah. and we don't have to worry about it. And it'll be interesting to see if what we're talking about right now, how like things are going to be changed forever. The like businesses have kind of rapidly skipped decades or years of figuring out how people can work remotely people are are switching to online businesses and so it'll be interesting to look back on this time and, and in this video and you watching this are gonna have to yeah. tell us did the predictions come true of like yeah is like everything moving towards online i mean i already know it, it already seems with just purchasing things online i know a lot of people have have been purchasing things on Amazon and everything, but even mm -hmm. like grocery delivery and all of those things that yeah. I've gotten used to with my family or pick up from stores where we just order and then we drive to pick it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those things are going to be here and people have gotten used to them, at least here in the States uh, where it's available and are going to continue to do that. Um, and we were, I mean, just lucky. I think we'll talk a little bit more later about personally how like an online <laughs> business has given us financial freedom and mm -hmm. things like that. But both of us were just so fortunate to be able to just continue what we've been doing the whole time, working from yeah. home and online. And our online businesses actually grew during this time, which is just crazy. Yeah, and, and it's not important to to have the business, not the online business now. I think Phil, it's, it's important now. But I mean, if we if we look at the impact that you and your business can have by turning your products online, turning what you have online, is unbelievable because we can reach people basically all over the world. You can, as Phil said, we during the pandemic we had the opportunity to still keep working from home yeah. on our online businesses and impacting the life of people or businesses all over the world. So uh, that's fantastic. I think it's, it's, I love everything online. I love the possibility and all, everything that the online business bring to us. And the good thing that I'm excited feel is that today with the tools that we have, having an online business is not something that just a few people can do or just big companies, you know, mm -hmm. anyone, basically anyone can start an online business from scratch 
And and if you didn't do that on 2020, uh, now is the best time, right, to start. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to be talking about things like how to how to decide what product to create, the equipment you need to get started, uh, whether you need a team or not, how to price your digital products, and then also actually how to market it. And we're going to talk about that in this call right now. But first, let's talk about the course that we just launched. Um, it's a course that dives into this whole process. And for anyone watching this, you can click the link in the description to check it out, get an amazing discount um, and a free preview of it. Um, but let's talk about what, what we actually cover and what's the goal with this course. So the, the goal of the course, guys, is to, to help you. If, you. if you are watching this and you want to start an online business, but you don't know how to do it, or if you are watching and you said, Diego, Phil, I want to create an extra source of income for me, for my business, for my family. And I'm not sure how to do, how to proceed. What is the first step? How to avoid the mistakes that uh, we, we, we see people doing, right? So uh, that's why we created this course to help you and to guide you from the beginning. So it doesn't matter if you already have an, if you have an idea of uh, an online product, a digital product, that's fantastic. If you said, Diego, I don't have any ideas. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to start. We guide you in this course from uh, finding your, base, your best ideas to choosing the best products that you can create and how to do this in an online so you can sell all over the world. We show you also how to market the course, uh, not the course, the products, right? Uh, doesn't matter which products you have. We show you how to price the products, how to market, how to... Uh, collect your customers, your audience information in the marketing sections that we have. So basically, Phil, I, I think that this is a, a complete guideline, a complete guide from anyone that can, that want and to start something online, that want to create an extra source of income or create products. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your what's your, your take on that? I mean, I'm just super excited to put this class together because a lot of people have asked me like how do i get started with an online business and i've helped yeah. a lot of people do different things from starting a podcast to starting an online course or different things but i think one of the best parts about it is helping people understand which product to start with and so we have like a whole section on coming up with the idea deciding which product to get started with because it really does depend on like the the audience your audience your skill set mm -hmm. um but then we go through i'm just going to list off the different products that we cover in this class online courses individual and gr group coaching books or ebooks audiobooks podcasts webinars membership sites subscription programs mastermind groups stock and template products printables and software and apps and so for each of these products we actually have like a mini crash course within this class where we show what why is it a great product how do you create that product what tools do you need what pricing do you what's the best pricing what platforms you can sell on and then uh, and then also best practices and tips for like creating good versions of those products so i think it's a it's a really good way for someone to just sort of get a great overview of what products they should consider um and actually learn how to create those products yeah, and um, I, themselves and another another thing that i love about the the, the course that we put together phil is that we are not helping people only to create these products, which is already uh, a, a good thing. But we are helping people to create that in the best version possible and also how to sell that. Mm -hmm. how, because it, it's not enough just to have the best online course or the best podcast. If you, don't, if you don't know how to market that, how to share that with the world, right? With your community, with your followers. Yeah. Um, that's something that we, we feel, feel and I feel that is something that will help uh, all the students a lot for sure yeah and i think i sometimes get in the mindset oh everyone know like this is common sense like how to put together a marketing funnel like first you put put a youtube video that links to an email list you got to have a lead magnet all this stuff that to us since we've been doing this for you know five ten years now but for someone who's just getting started it's very overwhelming 
And so I think the course does a good job of breaking down each step and showing people, you know, from email marketing to setting up your different social media platforms and how you use a Facebook group versus how you use Instagram to market a product. And then you dive into even more advanced topics like paid advertising if people want to get into that. So overall, we call it the Digital Products Masterclass because I think it is a masterclass and covers everything. And we're going to just touch on some of the things here in the rest of this call and get people started. But it's the actual class is over 20 hours long. It has a ton of great activities and assignments to get people going. Uh, downloadable slides, over 200 page PDF slides that you can download and follow along with. And you get to just see the behind the scenes of our businesses. And with all of our classes, we we always pride ourselves in teaching what we know, what we've done, what we've had experience in. So everything you, you learn in this class is what we've had success ourselves doing. And we'll dive into real world examples of how we did that. So yeah, again, yeah. just click, check the yeah. link in the description uh, to, to enroll. And we hope to... Ha- welcome you to to the class so moving on let's let's actually talk about deciding which product to create first um i mm-hmm. think um this is probably someone's first question if they have say they have an offline business what are some best practices for helping them decide what what product to choose that's a good point phil uh well if you have something offline already and you want to turn it on uh, offline and you want to t- convert that in a digital product, the first step is to ask yourself if you can transform what you already have on your business into a digital product, following any of the products uh, we, we help you to create. So uh, with that being said, you can also evaluate where you are with your audience. So if you are starting from scratch, probably, I won't recommend you to create a one-on-one coaching unless you are already an expert offline and you want to bring that online. That's fine. But if you are starting from scratch, maybe you can start with the easier products like an, an audiobook or an ebook or even a membership site that you can start from scratch and start building the content. Um, later, you can evolve to the next products. You can start with the lower price products and start growing. So your audience will start buying your products and you can start offering more high prices uh, mm-hmm. product. Yeah, I think people should take into account like what are their current skills? So if you have um, an in-person, maybe you teach some sort of exercise class, whether it's yoga or or weightlifting or meditation or physical therapy or whatever it is, um, that's a great skill to have but how do you turn that into a digital product do you know do you have any skills with a camera do you take photos do you can you do video um because then like an online course might be the perfect thing to jump into but if you don't have video skills you'll either have to learn that you can potentially outsource it if you have you know someone who wants to help you for free or if you have funds to outsource that that kind of assistance, um, or you can decide maybe a different product is the right one. Um, perhaps you don't want to be on camera. Maybe you have a business and, and you just don't want to be on camera. So maybe an, a, a podcast or an audio book is the right thing. Um, and if you're really good at interacting with people and like you're you're a coach for example or or a teacher or a trainer or something like that then jumping to an online coaching program seems like a a natural fit so i think it just takes people deciding if they have a skill set that they can use for a digital product versus um, if they want to learn something from scratch to build their online digital product Um, so that's what i would think think and then also like you have to like decide, try to figure out where is your audience. So going back to that example of like a yoga instructor, for example, a lot of people do already like doing yoga online and watching online yoga videos. But I don't think a lot of people are like trying to learn yoga by reading books. 
So there might yeah. be some people, right? But I think think an online course is where that target audience already might be. And so mm -hmm. those are things you have to look at as well. Per, but versus uh, I'm trying to think of something where reading a book might be the more natural place for an audience. Like um, maybe something more like financial advice or or something like that. If you're an, an accountant mm -hmm. and you're teaching you know, how to, how to run a successful rental property business or, or do your taxes or whatever it is. An online course, I think, can do, teach a lot of things, but a book might be the first place you, first digital product you create. Does that make sense? Exactly, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, another question I think a lot of people might have is what, is the basic equipment I need to create most of these project products? Um, I love this question, but I'm going to let you handle it no, yourself. Please, please, Phil. <laughs> uh, you, you are the best, the best to answer this. Okay. Please. Well, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll give the overview because I, you know, my background is video production, but I also want to hear your thoughts because, you know, as someone who didn't, study you know the tech and the equipment side of thing as your background i think it's good to have that perspective too but honestly it can start with something as basic as a, a computer um to you know a lot of these products you can just get started with a computer from writing books to starting a subscription program a membership site um some of the products we talked about like stock and template products or or printables can be created with simply a computer and even a free app like canva.com to, to design things. Um, I think the basic equipment that a lot of these products need is some kind of camera and better audio, just to make that experience of your client or your customer better, whether they're listening to an audio book that you record yourself or watching an online course that you you make yourself, uh, some kind of camera and microphone is good. And there's lots of options out there for USB microphones that make it super easy where you can just plug in a microphone, it's gonna sound 10 times better than your computer's internal microphone. A couple I'll just list off here to, you know, as a benefit to people, but we list more in the course, the, uh, Rode Podcaster Mic, the Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred, the uh, Blue Snowball or the Blue Yeti. These are all popular USB mics that will up your audio game. And then with a camera, the first thing might just be starting with a webcam, especially if you're doing like coaching or an online course where it's just you, you know, talking to camera. It's not like you have to. If you have to film yourself doing something, if you have to film yourself baking or doing yoga, I think doing that all with a webcam is possible, but is going to be diff difficult. But to get started, the Logitech C920, the Logitech Brio, uh, I'm actually still using the Logitech C920 right now for this call. And so this is an, a great example of like me just using, you know, the Logitech C920 webcam for part of my yeah. digital products business. Um, and then beyond that is when you can get into, you know, lighting kits, more professional audio, higher quality video. You, you know, Diego's setup right now looks super good. Like his video is a lot better than mine because you're using a mirrorless camera um, yeah. that looks amazing. So maybe you want to just talk a little bit about the equipment you're using or any other advice for people getting started. Sure. So, guys, if you want to start, if you if you said, okay, I don't have uh, I don't have money to invest now, or or you don't want to invest money on equipment, you can start with what you have, as Phil was saying, right? And you can grow from there. Mm -hmm. um, Phil, I personally started on creating courses six years ago on digital products, and the basic equipment I have was a laptop, a blue Yeti microphone, which is around around a hundred dollars on Amazon. And you connect it through USB to your computer and the C920, the webcam. That's it. I created most of my courses and most of my digital products using that equipment exactly. And I think it's less than $200 investment, of course, without counting the computer, right? Yeah. 
So you can start basically with your cell phone, with your computer, depending of the of the product you choose to create. But uh, the the main thing, guys, I think is not not allowing that to stop you in creating your products. Mm -hmm. You know, most people say, okay, I don't have, I need to buy the microphone. My audio is not too good. My camera is the camera of my laptop that is already built in. It's not the best quality, so I'll wait and and get some best camera. I will suggest you to to start now. Don't don't put it aside, you know, because it's easy for us to just put it aside, you know, and find uh, things that are not perfect. So the, the main message here is to avoid perfection in the beginning. You know, yeah. Phil is still with the C920. I think this camera is like sixty dollars or something. Phil. Yeah, I've had it for yeah. This was like the first investment I made too, probably mm -hmm. like seven or eight years ago. And I, I think this video is an example of how. We, we actually do have a, like a nice, a pretty nice setup. I have a, a, an even more professional microphone for my audio, the Heil PR40. But at the same time, you and I, we got on this call. I didn't set up my nice mirrorless camera to get mm -hmm. the perfect video. You asked, should I set up my better microphone? Or right now you're just using the audio yeah. from your, your earbuds, exactly. right? So, yeah. you know, it's to us, it's like, good enough and i think the the like quality different to difference to take that extra time to set it up maybe would be worth it to some people but i think for us as creators as people balancing you know family t I, I mean for me i'm taking into account like i just came out to this call to record this with you from watching my kids at home and it probably would have taken just an extra 10 15 minutes to set up my camera but those, all those little decisions get in the way of actually just getting this information out there, which is ultimately what a digital product is, right? It's just us sharing information in some format and helping people uh, learn or grow or, or whatever it is. But even for us, it's like we, we could be perfectionists and try to get everything perfect, but even Diego and I would, would, wouldn't be as successful or wouldn't get out as much great information without you know saying okay it's okay not to be perfect in everything we do yeah yeah all so right Phil, one question what yeah. do you think that for people that are watching do you think they should invest if they want to to start buying products to buying equipment for the products should they go first for the microphone or for the webcam what do you recommend mm. or both i think the I think the microphone is probably better to invest in because I, I always say this and I think it's true, like bad video can be forgivable. People can watch a video with bad, bad quality video, but if the audio doesn't sound good, it's so hard to pay attention. It's so annoying if there's a ton of echo or background noise or whatever that uh, an upgrade to a better microphone can help with. So I would say get the USB microphone um, because for pretty much all of the products where that we teach uh, from courses to audiobooks to podcasts to coaching to anything where you're on camera talking to someone or people are hearing you, the audio is going to be there. And, and I think better audio is, is yeah, probably the best. It's good, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you, if you don't want to go now for the the usb microphone and invest a little bit maybe you people can start with uh, a simple external microphone right just to avoid recording straight from the the phone or the camera do yeah. you agree with that phil yeah i okay. agree i also say you could also get by if you figure out how in your wherever you're you're recording your videos or doing calls or doing your podcast if you can set up your room with enough noise dampening you know equipment or if people are just getting started out it's probably just like throwing blankets on the table or wh whatever wherever you're recording you can get away and get decent audio with just your internal phone microphone or your mm -hmm. your uh computer or laptop microphone so again, it's not, I just don't want that to hold people back from getting started because there's ways to get high quality audio or video with, with whatever you have. Um, you just got to get a little more creative with it. 
All right, so that was equipment. We dive more into the, that in the course, so hopefully people can, um, you know, for each of the products, we talk about the equipment you need. So uh, if you're interested in courses, then you'll learn that. If you're not, then you can skip to whatever section you want. Uh, another big question is, can I start creating more than one product or is it better to focus on one product first? And we could talk about, I guess, the benefits of creating multiple products um, mm -hmm. along with this. Yeah. Well, we, we didn't chat about this before, Phil, right? So maybe we have a different opinion about this question. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, if you are starting and you have no experience creating digital products and it's your first time creating something online, I will say to start with one product first, right? Concentrate all your energy and your focus in that product schedule. Put it on your calendar. These days I will work in this product and just work and it will, you, you will finish. We have the step-by-step -step on the course. So, uh, and by doing that, I mean, sometimes if we said, okay, I will create a podcast and also I'll do a, a, a coaching program with my clients. So that's good. It's good to have these plans. But I will suggest you, if you are starting now, to choose one of these projects and work with all your energy on one and you will finish faster. You will have the result faster. Faster. You will get motivated because you will see that, let's say you choose the podcast first, you'll see your episodes going out, people listening, maybe some reviews coming. So, uh, and later you can go to the other the other. Uh, projects, the other uh, digital products that we have for you. We have different products and uh, and also we, we have a chapter there where we talk about using multiple products on your business. Right, Phil? Yeah, I agree with you. I think when you're starting out, you don't want to spread yourself thin. You want to, you know, do the best at whatever you're working on. And I think if you're in your mind, you're thinking, okay, well, first I'm going to make this an online course, then I'm going to make it into an ebook it's you're, It's going to be hard to focus on what you really need to do, and that's make the best online course possible um, or whatever product you're creating. So I agree. I think stick with one to start out with. Um, but the benefit is you can, you know, once you create an online course, for example, you have all that information put into a course that could easily be transferred into a book or into a podcast or into a coaching program. And, and that's at the later on, I think you can figure that out. But I think also it's not only about creating the product, it's about marketing the product. And if you have all these different products that you're trying to promote at the same time when you're just getting started, it's just not going to be as successful as if you have one focused goal of I'm going to sell this ebook or I'm going to, you know, get people into my subscription program. And, and that's why I think having one product is, is good. I think personally for me, I don't, my main digital product is online courses and all of the other products that I create from, you know, ebooks to podcasts, they're more of, a product that I put out there to actually drive people back to my my website or my main business that I get to my online courses um, rather than it's not me because I have converted my some of my classes into ebooks for example I'm not promoting those ebooks that much in the sense of like I want people I'm gonna drive a ton of traffic to those ebooks I'm more using the marketplace of Amazon to hopefully get more people from Amazon finding those ebooks back to my website to buy my my courses. I think that's getting a little bit um, down into the details of like different marketing strategies, which we cover in the course. Um, but it's also related to another question we have, it, which is how do you price a digital product? And this is going to have a range for all types of different products. Um, but what what are your initial suggestions or, or ideas initial ideas are to uh to see the kind of pros you have as you mentioned phil so if you have a coaching program the price will be different than an audiobook of course 
But the main thing, guys, I think is to analyze the, your niche and the market, right? So if you have, an, uh, let's say you launch an ebook about investing, uh, you go to Amazon and you check the, the results, right, for investing books. And you see, you will see, and, and we talk about in details about uh, this in the course, you will see the range. You will define a range of price for your product. So you will know by analyzing the market and your competitors that you could uh, price your ebook, for example, from five dollars to fifteen dollars for that for that specific topic. Mm -hmm. So basically, my initial idea is to uh, to see the market and analyze your competitors. Um, that's the the start. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I think. Um... People also have to decide, and it's going to depend on the product, but are they self-hosting the product or are they putting it on a marketplace? Most of these products have what I define as a marketplace. For example, online courses have places like a Udemy.com or a Skillshare.com. Ebooks have an Amazon.com. Um, I'm trying to think, oh, like pr for printables or stock products, there's all the stock photography sites out there or creativemarket.com for printables or etsy.com for printables. And so if you're putting your product on a marketplace, pricing is sometimes already decided for you. Or at least if you want to be competitive, you have to put your, your product for a certain price. If you're self-hosting your product, meaning you're putting it on your own website using tools that we'll, we'll, we share in the course, but um, there's all kinds of tools for selling products on your own site from a WooCommerce or a Shopify store to different plugins that you use on your own WordPress site. Um, but you have more control over that price. Um, that being said, this is the decision is if you're selling your your product on your own platform, you do all the work. You do all the work of driving the traffic to your product. And that that's beneficial if you already have an audience, if you have social media following, if you have a website, if you have an existing business that has previous customers, you can put a product on your own website and command a higher price because you're doing all that work and it's unique. But if you're putting your product on a, a marketplace, then it's going to take um, it might take less work to get people to that product, but you are on Udemy, for example, there's a specific price range you can choose on Amazon. You have a specific, if you're in the Kindle program with an ebook, there's a specific price range for your books. Uh, so you can't like charge a thousand dollars for an ebook on Amazon. Yeah. But if you have a ebook worth that much and you put it on your own site, you might be able to, to sell it for that price if you have the right audience or, or yeah. marketing funnel. But I think that's like a key decision people need to make is self-hosting versus using a marketplace because that determines a lot about pricing. Mm -hmm. And that's an important decision that you will need to take when you're creating the product. We have details about that on the course too. Yeah. So if you are worried now about, okay, should I go self-hosting or platform? Don't worry about now, uh, just worry. Concentrate your efforts in creating the product and choosing the idea and starting the process. And when we get to that point, you will have all the tools to decide where to go. Yeah. And one thing I liked in the course that we did, and hopefully people enjoyed it or people who sign up will enjoy it, is the breakdown of with this product, how how do I make a thousand dollars or how do I make ten thousand dollars? We have like a simple chart that just shows, okay, well, if you're self-hosting an online course, you're selling it for three hundred dollars. I mean, it's simple math, but it's nice to see it like visually laid yeah. out for you and just kind of get you excited about, okay, well, this is what it takes to make like a significant income with this product. Um, so that's all laid out in every section of the course. All right, another question is, do I need a team to create digital products? What do you think, Phil? <laughs> you don't need a team for sure. You, don't. you definitely yeah. don't need a team. I mean, we have done most of our work, I think, without a team. I think kind of going back to what I said earlier, if you don't have the skills to create a specific product that you really want to create and you're not willing to learn those skills, you can outsource that work. You can also, or, or just hire someone to help you. 
do it, do that. But to get started, you definitely don't need a team. Um, and even today, even with my business, which today is a seven figure a year business, I have no full time workers. I have a couple people helping me. I outsource certain graphic design projects. Sometimes I outsource my video editing for courses. But for the most part, I'm I'm doing everything myself. Um, but yeah, what about you? What, yeah. uh, same same here. Yeah. yeah, you don't need a team to start for sure. And even to continue with the business after you start, it's not mandatory to have a team. As Phil said, uh, for me, for my case, Phil, I have now a video editor that I hired uh, recently. So basically, for five years, I was editing all my videos and making myself all the the, the digital products. Um, also, I have another team member, which is a, a, a virtual assistant that answered the, the student questions in my courses. And that's it. So basically, the whole uh, course creation process, the whole pr uh, digital product creation process, I do it by myself uh, now, with the exception of the video editing just now. Because for five years, I, I did it myself. And I, I love to, to do the video editing, honestly. But takes time, so mm -hmm. it's better sometimes to invest the time creating more products instead of being uh, editing the videos. So yeah, I but think yeah, depends, you don't need a team for sure. It, it depends on what people's goals are. I think both of us could probably say and think, well, if we from the beginning, instead of saying we're going to do everything ourselves and have this like, you know, solo sort of business that gives us the ultimate freedom to do whatever we want whenever. Uh, if instead we were like, we're going to reinvest all of our profits in, in creating a team or outsourcing and growing our business faster or differently, that could have been a, I wouldn't say more successful route. It could have been a different route. And I think you and I both enjoy how we've set up our businesses where it's pretty hands off when we want to be hands off or hands on when we want to be hands on. Mm -hmm. But I don't think ni either of us wants to be a manager just managing people all the time. That's like not what our goals are. But that is something that, that you can do. I think ju that's just what happens, though. The more people you hire, uh, you end up being, you know, spending more of your time managing than actually doing what the business is. And for us, that's yeah. creating digital products. So it's just a different path. But I, I think the key question is, do you need a team and the answer is absolutely not there's so many tools and apps out there that make everything from running social media to creating the products to marketing them it easy enough for someone to do themselves even if they have no experience um so definitely not a, a requirement to have a team let's even dive. to create a website now right to create a website you just go to one of the platforms and you put your domain mm -hmm. sign and the website is there you choose the template you know it's all automatic so you don't need any technical knowledge yeah i know wix.com yeah. squarespace.com these platforms are so easy now to to create a website they have all the tools and plugins to to sell digital products and if you you know that I think that used to be one of the hardest things is creating the website. Um, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, now it's like so much easier. Yeah. Speaking of that, let's talk a little bit more about marketing. So we've covered a lot about like creating the actual products, but we want to kind of cap off this chat with diving into marketing strategies. Can you define first, like the differences between organic and paid traffic or sure. marketing and what that looks like? So what we recommend on the course is we have two, two paths that you can choose to, to sell your, your, your products. And you can choose one path over the other, or you can choose both paths, right? And we will talk in details uh, about that in the course, in the marketing section. So the one path, the first one is organic. Organic means when you don't pay for, uh, for traffic, when people find you, find your products, your content, your videos, your podcast organically. That means they find it on Google or on social media. They are just there on Facebook and suddenly you show up, you know, your content is there. Mm -hmm. So basically people are finding you organically. When you go to Google and you search for something and you see the results, the first two usually are ads, people that pay, 
but all the other results that you will visit that, the pages that you could click are organic. So you can go there, they grow organically. So you, they are not paying for you to visit them. Uh, and the second path is to pay for traffic, which is also a great, uh, a great way to do it. It's easy, it's faster. Uh, you have less efforts, effort, but you need to pay, you need to invest money to, to get that, right? Mm -hmm. And we can talk uh, for hours about this field, but basically <laughs> that's, that's the main difference and the, the two paths that we are going deep on the course. Yeah, and I think I want to hear maybe a couple best practices or tips for using paid ads and things to keep in mind because that's not my area of ex expertise and I learned from you, um, but I'll just share a little bit more about the organic strategy that I use, which uh, has been successful. I think in terms of deciding uh, deciding what platforms you're going to be on is like a good is a very important decision um, because you could try to be on all the social media platforms from Twitter to Instagram to TikTok to to YouTube as well to doing content marketing on a blog. Um, but it's a lot for one person to do that, especially like in the beginning. Over time, I think you and I have both kind of done all of this and, and set it up so it's easier. And there are tools that allow you to, you know, cross promote or cross post your social media to all of your accounts. But I still think it's a good idea to decide what is like the one type of content or social media con platform that you're going to use. And the question really is, where is your, your key audience? So this might depend on what the topic is that your or yeah, your, your, your topic for your digital product, or it might depend on the digital product itself. So if you are going, doing online courses, YouTube makes a lot of sense for, because people searching for answers to their questions on YouTube will likely be interested in a an online course on that versus if you are designing printables or or temp stock products um, or template products perhaps doing your own blog and and putting out good quality blog content that you promote on Pinterest might be the best strategy so you have to kind of look at where your audience is see what type of product you're creating but for me, YouTube has made the most sense. And then also Instagram, because a lot of our, our products are related to, to photography and creative learning creative skills. And so there's a lot of, uh, or Instagram is the perfect sort of visual social media platform to, to create content for. And for me, it just comes down to creating high quality content that people will hopefully search for, answering people's questions. That's what we talk about in all these these products is like you're answering someone's question people have a problem so you're creating a product that's going to help them and it's the same for marketing people have problems they have questions and so we are creating little pieces of content that are hopefully going to answer those questions and when they do that they find out about us and we work them through a marketing funnel that Sounds may sound confusing, but it, it it can be as simple as you know putting out a YouTube video and directing them to the product page where they might buy, or it could be as confusing or maybe not confusing, but as complicated as you know answering a question with a YouTube video that sends them to a blog post where they sign up for an email list, they get a lead magnet from that, they get a series of emails that ultimately sends them to a product page. And uh, it can even get more complicated from there. But the core substance of my marketing strategy is just answering people's questions with content that I post mostly on YouTube or on my website as a blog article, and then sharing it through social media um, to try to get more people finding that, that content. Yeah, excellent. And remember, as Phil said, guys, that YouTube, I mean, if you are thinking, okay, should I go first to YouTube or Instagram or Facebook? 
of course depends of where your audience is. But for if you are in the position that your audience is in all these social networks, uh, I will recommend you to start with YouTube. If you are saying, Diego, I don't know where to start, mm -hmm. man, uh, I'm lost. So I will say, okay, you will have to be on camera for YouTube or record your computer screen, depending on what do you do. But it's powerful because it's the second biggest search engine in the world. So people go there, as Phil said, to find answers. I personally go to YouTube, Phil, every day searching for some keywords, for some phrases, how to do this. Now we move to a new house. I need to fix some things. And I say, okay, how to fix this, how to fix yeah. that. So I'm basically saving money with YouTube. Yeah. But I'm finding my my uh, my my the answers that i look for on there so if you are using the organic traffic strategy that's a good way to start right just putting content there the content your videos will live for a long time um it won't go away in 24 hours or after a week so they will grow and people will find your content organically very easily yeah yeah i think that that's a good good point and it's i think people starting if they, if i was starting today i would think gosh i need to be on tiktok or i gotta get really good at instagram reels because that's the hot new thing but at the end of the day though social to me anyways and maybe i'm wrong and, and i think different strategies work for different people but social media content it just disappears so fast and yeah. i don't think social media platforms are the best place to to post the content to post the the core of your content that will ultimately drive sales i think like you said youtube which is a place where your videos will be there forever and and easier to find forever because yeah your your social media posts your p pictures might be there there forever if you don't delete them but are people going to be easily is it going to be easy be, for people to find that? I think that's no. the the problem with social media. I think social media is great for driving <clears throat> traffic to your content, but not mm -hmm. for like the main marketing yeah. platform. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you post a video, how I, I create a video on 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 Facebook about how to create a Facebook page for your business, for example. And I post there after a month how you will find it. Phil. You need to scroll down. There is yeah. not a search box uh, that people use. Yeah, the search know? function so, is terrible on Facebook. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So on, on, on Google or YouTube, people find it very easily. And the older your video is, if the content is still relevant, you know, it will rank higher. So it, it's good. It's good to have it there. Yeah. So for paid ads, I guess, I mean, I can ask as a beginner myself, what what... I guess, where would I get started? Or like, if I wanted to just test out an ad for a product, what's like the first things that I need to do or consider? That's a good question. So first you need to choose which platform are you going to use for the ads, right? You have, I recommend you to use one of two ways. The first one is YouTube ads or Google ads. And the second one is Facebook and Instagram. They are together. Facebook and Instagram is the same company. So when you create ads for them, for Facebook or Instagram, it's on the same place. Yeah. It's more difficult if you are starting, Phil, to, to create an ad for Google or for YouTube. I mean, if you go there and you create the ad, you will do it. I mean, anyone can do it. It's not difficult. You just follow the steps. But it's way more complicated, in my opinion, and looking people... Over the years, people that are starting from scratch and learning ads is more complicated than creating on Facebook or Instagram. So mm -hmm. if you are starting now and you want to test and you see how the ads work, put just a few dollars to test it every day or every week, I'll say go with Instagram and Facebook first. Mm -hmm. But that being said, man, it's very important not to stay there. It's easy to stay there. Okay, I know how to create the ad. It's easy now. Some ads are working. It's great. It's good to explore YouTube also. Mm -hmm. Not sure about Google if you are starting, but YouTube ads are also powerful depending on the product you choose, the digital product that you are creating. Mm -hmm. uh, the results that you could have with YouTube ads are, are way high, in my opinion. And one mistake field that most people and businesses do is this. 
People go to these platforms and they create the ad. They are excited about it. But there is one simple problem that they are sending people, they are, they are sending the audience to their sales page, right? So you are, you are reaching people that don't know you, call traffic, we call that. So people that don't know you about you, about your business, and you show your ad to them, you are paying for that. Mm -hmm. They like the ad, they like what you offer, and you are sending them to your sales page. So what is that, Diego? Sales page is where they will go and buy your product. Some people will buy your product there. If your product is really attractive, the offer is fantastic, it's perfect, everything is in place, they will buy your product. But the best strategy is to do the funnel strategy. What is that? You create an ad, you are paying for that. You drive people to your opt-in page where you are collecting their name and email in exchange for a, a lead magnet, which is a free PDF or a free ebook, mm -hmm. anything. And once you have this information, the name and the email, you have all the power because now you can create an email sequence and we do that in the course, step by step. So if you never heard about that, it's there. We will do that. And with this sequence, we will create an irresistible desire for your digital products in this customer's heart. You know, that's the goal, is to educate them uh, add value, show them why your product is good, why you are good, why your company is good, and why they need your product, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and they want, they will want your product. So by doing that, we are creating ads and we are not just losing the sale, we are collecting their information, having a conversation with them, and having a sale at the end because it's a, a system that works and works for years. I mean, big companies use this. Everybody, everybody that is doing serious marketing online are doing this system, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Yeah, no, that we answered have more content on the course. Yeah. That answered a lot of the follow up questions I was going to ask you, like sending traffic to the sales page versus some sort of other page where they they opt in. And I'm guessing that it's probably a better idea for you to create a custom sort of experience where you're sending traffic to like a very specific page that has the opt-in with instead of just like to your homepage of your, your website or to like a blog article or something that's related. Yes. Right. Unless you are looking for brand awareness, they call, which is a, a marketing goal where your goal could be that people will know your brand and your products yeah. without buying them necessarily, but just on that case is is valuable. But that's how I think feel that's for more advanced companies, people that have more money to spend on ads, right? Yeah, cool. No, that was, I think that's a great uh, for people who are just getting started out. That's some great tips. So let's move on to the last question and maybe my favorite question um, is just what are the advantages of an online business today, um, specifically about all the freedom that you get with an online business. Um, so do you want to kick it off? You, you start. Okay, <laughs> you were just talking a lot for, for, for about ads, so I'll give you a little break. But all right, yeah, an online business. If people are watching this and they're like me, when I graduated from school, from college, I, I got a couple full-time jobs and no matter what, even though I got great jobs in great companies with great people doing what I actually studied and loved, which is not the case for a lot of people, but even still, I just could not handle or did not enjoy having a boss, working for someone else, seeing all the work that I did just being used to to promote someone else's business that ultimately I wasn't passionate about. And maybe it would be different if I was if I did work for a company that like f fit perfectly with like my life's motto and, and the goals I had, but it, it it just wasn't that way. And so I was always looking for ways to make money on the side and it was both necessary because I had a ton of student loans and I needed to make extra money to be able to pay that off on top of um, just everyday expenses. And so I was always doing all kinds of things from 
side wedding videography gigs to video projects, photography, all that. Um, but it wasn't until I discovered the idea of passive income and how a selling a digital product online could be passive and could be like this recurring income that happened without the without trading my time for dollars and this i mean this sounds cliche for people watching this you might have heard a ton of a thousand people say the same thing but there it's it's a real thing where you can you know create a digital product and you put it out there and you do most of the work up front in creating the product and designing a marketing funnel but then over time, you know, people can buy our products in the middle of the night on vacation. And the novelty has worn off for me that people can do that. But I, I have to like slap myself because it's pretty amazing the, the businesses we've created. But I remember in the very beginning, I think I got this idea from Pat Flynn, the master of passive income. But I remember setting up a, a text notification on my phone whenever I would get that email sale of my course, my first courses. And, you know, there'd be days where I would get a handful of, of pings on my phone when I was at my normal job or at night or whatever. And it was just like, this is amazing. This, this, uh, just, yeah, being able to sell a digital product online and it just grew from there. And, you know, Fortunately for me, I had to stop that because I was getting too many text messages. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just amazing. I, yeah, I can talk more, but what, what about you? Yeah, I, I also love this question, Phil. Uh, this, this question fill my heart, man. Uh, fi financial freedom, right? As you were saying, um, having the chance to to, to earn money while you are, you are sleeping, basically, because with the online, not because we are good or because you are good, it's because we have an online business, right? That's advantage is open 24 hours a day. So you are earning money literally while you are sleeping. You have students all over the world, right? Um, so if you check your revenue when you go to sleep and you check when you wake up, you are a good amount of money there. So that's, the, the beauty of online business, guys, is is that. I mean, you can serve people all over the world. You have the financial freedom. You can reach this. this in the beginning, it takes time, right? You need It's like a stair you need to climb. But you will start creating your first product, selling the product. You create the next one and the next one and the next one. And you will see that you will get to a point where you will... I always said that to my students. You will get to a point where you will ask yourself, okay, should I continue working on my regular job or should I just quit and, you know, do what I love, which is this, helping people all over the world? So uh, I, I, I think that's a question that divides uh, the life of, of an online entrepreneur because it's the total independence, let's say, when you uh, quit your job and you do what you love online. And I had this this opportunity also. You, I was working as a network engineer on Oregon in a in a good company, earning a good salary, and and I like my I, I like my my job. But the problem was that it was connected with difficult situations. If you work in network, for example, for a company, and some I mean people come to you only when things are on fire, right? The email server is down. The you know it's always people are in a stressful situation. And I said to myself, okay, Diego, you need to see and look for a way to create independence, to have freedom, you know, to 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 work with people's dream. And this is what we are doing with you here, guys. We are helping you to to build a business and build a dream. This, honestly, uh, we are the proof here. This is something that if you take this seriously and you uh, follow the steps and you put the energy and the, the work here, is something that could. Uh, change your life, right? Economically, also the time freedom field. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk about this for two hours. Man. Time freedom, you have time to stay, stay with your family, with your kids, you know. Uh, when my daughter was born in 2018, um, 
she she was born in November. I stopped work stopped working for four months. So basically, mm-hmm. I said, okay, I will take a month off and and help my wife, you know, stay with the kid. But I saw it was more difficult than I was expecting. So I took four months, and during this four month field, my business actually grew. So I, I had more students, and I basically didn't do any work you know it was mm-hmm. just running automatically and I, I think for you the same right you have the same situation yeah i know we've had uh we have three kids two different pregnancies because the first were were twins um but same thing i knew i wanted to take off time and so i took off at least yeah i think it was three or four months completely off with the twins and i mean who can say that especially depending on where you live in the world a lot of dads don't even get much paid parental leave and so just being able to say i'm just going to not work on anything basically and have the business continue running because it's it's all online the whole sales process from people getting the product to to using the product is all online that's a a beautiful thing that allowed me to to have more time with my family and i mean the yeah. it's the silliest thing but like the toughest decision and question i have right now in my life is figuring out how to balance work life with family life and uh I like doing this work. And so sometimes I want to do more work, but at the end of the day, I could just not work, you know, maybe work for, for have that four hour work week. I, I literally could do that. And I don't say that to, to brag, but I say that to share like what actually could happen. This is a real world example of that, but it's all about putting the effort in early on and reaping the wo- rewards later. And it's from, you know, whether I created one digital product and for people watching this, it's all that effort you put in before you know if you're going to make any money, you you have to create the product, you have to create uh, per, a website, a funnel, marketing stuff. And then you find out, is it going to se- sell? And maybe it will, maybe it won't. Uh, your first one, it might not. But combine that, you know, multiply that by at this point, dozens of courses that I've put out, dozens of other digital products, that's what's allowed me to have this ultimate freedom of my time um, that I'm so grateful for. And I think the thing is with anybody that I've seen try to create their own digital product, everyone has been successful who has stuck with it. And I think it's the same with anything. But a lot of people and a lot of people watching this might try to get started, get frustrated, never finish it, put out their first one. It's not making as much money as they thought it was, so they quit. But I promise you, if, you, if you're if you watching this and you want to be successful, you can. It just, you got to stick with it. And it might be your second product. It might be the third one or the combination of, you know, four products or or extra YouTube videos or whatever it is, there's going to be a moment where it all clicks and everything starts to be worth it. And um, yeah, you just got to stick with it. And yeah. And yeah. Persistence. That That's, I mean, if you ask me, Diego, what's the one thing you, the one tip that you will give me if I start from scratch? Exactly what you said, Phil. Persistent, you know, just keep doing it. You know, it will work. Eventually yeah. it will work. Everything depends if you will persist or not. That's it. I mean, you of course, you will change uh, directions during the way, but you will get there. It's just a matter of persistence, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the last kind of freedom people get is geographical freedom, just being able to live wherever mm-hmm. they want, um, being able to move. I mean, this helped me. I I followed my wife up to Berkeley when she got her gra- uh, her master's degree. I was able to, you know, move up there, have my business on the side, not worry about finding a job right away. We were able to move back to Southern California later on um, when we got married and we wanted to be closer to family. So again, I didn't have to, it didn't depend on a job. Um, I could just keep doing my business wherever. And I think a lot of people can be a lot more creative. People can live, you know, travel full time. They can move to another country uh, experiment that way. And that's another thing that digital products 
allow people to to do, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, and you can work when you want, where you want, at the time that you want, in the project that you want. You have you don't have meetings, you don't have boss, so it's it's a combination. It's it's good things. <laughs> yeah, and I think I mean yeah. it sounds it sounds like the dream, mm-hmm. and it is the dream. But like we just said, it takes persistence and it does take yeah. work. We're not here to say that it's a fat, quick, get rich quick scheme that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take work. But hopefully our course has helped people, you know, get started or for people who are, are just starting it or who are going to start, um, are, it, it will really get people on the right path forward with a successful business. So any, any last words or, or thoughts about all this stuff? Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for you that that are watching this up to now. If you are with us all during, during all this lecture, all this video, uh, thank you for, for your time. And if you are here, if you are watching this to the end, I think you have what it takes to, to be successful. What do you think, Phil? Yeah. Persistent, <laughs> you know. Put things into action. <laughs> I agree. It just put it into action, though. I think it's one thing to watch it, watch the course, consume all the content. The next step is actually putting it into action and doing that. So I think people should be yeah. successful. And we hope we can hear from people's success stories. So if people have gone through the course and have many successes, have completed a product, we want to hear about them. So please share them with us. Tag us. Post it on social media. Tag us share it with the Facebook group. And um, yeah, for people who are not in the course yet, if you're watching this video and you're interested, as we've mentioned, you can click on the link in the description, get access to it for a great deal. You can also check out a free preview of it, but you get over 20 hours of video content. You've got assignments, downloadable resources, uh, fun activities, over 12 or well we have 12 digital product crash courses within this master class uh, learn everything from just choosing your topic choosing your product to learning how to create that product to how to market it the whole shebang here in this course so um yeah we hope to see people in this course if you're interested so diego thanks so much have a great you, day Phil. and we will talk soon and everyone else thank you for watching and best of luck with your digital products.